Hi everyone, I'm William Narmantes. I'm so in this presentation, I'll introduce myself. I'll go through a list of topics I'm talking about. Uh, I'll also talk about some future content. All of this should take around 30 minutes and then I'm going to leave 15 minutes for questions basically. Um, and I'll try to publish a video of this talk as well. So uh, I'm William. I've uh, done three years Scala consulting, starting in London. I have dozens of Scala projects, many of those in production. Um, you can find me on my website, Twitter, LinkedIn, GitHub, all the usual stuff that a Scala person may have. Uh, so the topics I'm going to talk about are uh, Scala 2.12, uh, Scala use cases, uh, Scala drawbacks, Scala selling points, and my personal recommendations from my personal experience. So uh, not necessarily a, something that aligns with everyone. So um, Scala 2.12 was released very, very recently. Uh, it's been a very, very major thing uh, for the Scala community because it's uh, much more lightweight and it makes use of all the Java 8, uh, all the features that Java 8 has to offer. So in Scala 2.12, the Scala trait is now compiled into a Java 8 interface. This means that any code that you compile from Scala is much smaller in bytecode size. Uh, it could potentially be faster and it could potentially be optimized much better by the JVM for speed. Um, the next very nice thing, uh, uh, the single abstract method in Java 8. This is basically Java 8 lambdas. So previously Scala was using uh, its own interface to implement functional programming, but now uh, Scala is able to compile down to very, very raw Java 8 using Invoke Dynamic. Scala 2.12 also comes with a Scala Java 8 compat library, which uh, lets you uh, interact with streams, Java 8 streams, uh, lets you convert Scala features uh, to Java completion stage and vice versa, uh, and also allows you to do uh, conversions between Java 8 and Scala options. The very important thing about Java 8 options is that there are some primitive options. So they they may they may there is an optional double, optional long, for example. Scala doesn't really have that. Scala, uh, yeah, doesn't really have that. But uh, with Java 8 compat, you can kind of easily uh, make options work with each other. So, and I think one of the very, very nice things that was very important to the Scala community was a right bi biased either. By the way, how many people have done Scala? Just to get an idea. Okay, so how many people do not know about the either? Ah, oh, not very many. Do not know about either. Okay. So uh, I either lets you basically s um, select either one value or another of two different types. Um, so in Scala 2.12, the default um, value for an either is basically right. It makes it easier for you to uh, compose your functions. Um, and actually, one thing that's not so popular in Scala 2.12 I think it may have been overlooked is uh, the features have been tidied up very much to make them much more composable. Um, but again, I'll provide references to all this information later on uh, if you're interested. So um, just an example, the uh, single abstract method. So previously in Scala 2.11, so if you read from a file, you read all lines from a file, you would get a Java list of string. Uh, in Scala 2.11, you would have the option to use the for each syntax from Java, but in order to execute um, a print line for each line, you would have to write this very cumbersome syntax. It just yeah, it's, it's, it's not something we want to do. It's just boilerplate. Um, or alternatively, you can take um, a Java list converted to a Scala buffer and then use a Scala method to print each line. But in Scala 2.12, you get a benefit that you actually uh, 
your print line function is automatically um, automatically becomes a automatically becomes converted basically so I, th I think that's one of the very very nice things uh, obviously it decreases the size of your code that you compile um, potentially a faster compilation but I'm not so sure I mean Scala is quite slow to compile anyway uh, yeah so now into the use cases so not so much Scala 2.12 specific um, so live packet processing was a very interesting one. I did a project with Teralytics and we have a uh, three, I believe, Teralytics people here tonight. Um, so for Teralytics, uh, using a Java native interface, I'm able to uh, call into native code to get very, very high performance. I think this was a this was at least a 20 times boost in performance for capturing live packets. So that was very, very significant. Uh, in Scala, you're able to make use of all the JVM features to actually call into native code and get very high performance where you need it. Um, also, big data, very important use case. Uh, typically, you would use the Spark, Spark SQL to, to deal with big data. Sp uh, the difference between Spark and Spark SQL is that uh, Spark SQL is high level. It's more like, you know, I'm going to execute a SQL statement on the data set that I have. Um, but if, I, if, I don't, if I'm unable to express myself in SQL, I'm able to go down to a lower level processing, which is what Spark's IDDs basically do. Um, one very underlooked use case is uh, desktop UIs with JavaFX. Java 8 comes with uh, JavaFX, very, very nice toolkit. It's very useful to, um, to do stuff on your desktop. You don't need to write uh, a, you know, a separate front-end app, a separate back-end app, and then a separate app to do your logic. You can just do everything uh, quite directly. Very useful if you're experimenting with something and you want very, very fast iterations but not so useful when you want to deploy to the web. It doesn't work at all. And th there are people trying to do that, but in that case, you probably want to go into using Scala.js. Scala.js, um, a very difficult project. Let's just wait. So Scala.js uh, was, was one very, very ambitious project, it uh, seemed to me something like that wouldn't actually succeed three years ago, but they actually made it and they have a very, very uh, good ecosystem, very good um, auto-completion support uh, that you can get automatically from IntelliJ. Uh, it's a very, very nice gem. Uh, I'm again going to provide some references to it. Um, it's a very nice article written by Li Howie. Uh, who is actually Singaporean, um, but he's working at Dropbox now, and he's uh, he's done some very nice work on Scala.js. Uh, concurrency use cases. Acker, the Acker framework is very very comprehensive. There are many libraries that um, Acker provides uh, to to do concurrent computation, basically, or to interact over the network with other. ACA nodes. I think, I believe Spark is actually using ACA for its concurrency. Generally, ACA is very, um, it's fairly low level. You're not going to uh, implement very much code in it, but when you actually need to de deal with concurrency, that's the tool you go to. Um, one <coughs> other thing people may not be aware of is ACA has IO, so you can talk UDP with, um, with external services very easily. Uh, I actually use it in a gaming project because online games use the UDP protocol and I'm able to, using, using ACA IO in, to interact with a game server, get some data from it, then pass it in binary and then uh, shift it onto uh, play and then serve it to the world basically. Uh, so that's some use cases. but. It all sounds very nice, but Scala also has some some significant drawbacks. It has a very small market share. Um, my estimate is between five to ten percent of what Java has. So that would 
that's you know in in terms of the number of jobs available in, in terms of number of scholar developers available to take on our projects so um, it's it's always a, a big risk for any company to actually take on scala fully uh, which is why um, you know they they really have to consider that but many companies have succeeded in overcoming that and getting the best talent uh, there's a very very steep learning curve and, and frankly it's not really in a Scala language it's more in SVT um, it's called simple build tool it lets you build Scala but I don't really think it's simple I think it's scalable it's very very scalable we can you can with many build tools you, you know you can start very quickly you can start building your app very very easy to get started with but when you start scaling your project becomes bigger you integrate many more modules suddenly it becomes really really painful but SBT initially really hard but over the long term it's really really beneficial you just you you, you move at the same speed that you started with basically uh, there's too much choice so um, for example there's no standard JSON library uh, the wheel is reinvented often you'll see multiple XML libraries multiple JSON libraries um, you see some libraries that basically copy Java library functionality for no reason um, so you know while it sounds bad that the wheel is reinvented again time will tell just like I thought about Scala.js that it wouldn't go anywhere actually uh, reinventing the wheel may be for the good of Scala <coughs> because it doesn't depend so much on the Java uh, primitives basically uh, there are so many language features um, the question I, I mean the complaint I had from many people I worked with was you know I have this feature available I have that feature uh, how do I combine them all or do I combine them or do I use them um, so I've seen people people take Scala's implicits, for example, to the extreme, where they take an implicit uh, boolean as a as an argument to a function call. But that's you know that's one of the things that people can easily abuse, make use of, and uh, then feel the pain of having made the wrong decision. So it's it's. It's very powerful. It's not going to stop you from making mistakes. And there's this frequent change. I think the well, well, the Scala versions themselves are fairly well compa backwards compatible. Um, in the ecosystem itself, which is evolving really, really quickly, uh, you have big problems, especially the play framework. So while the play framework went from 2.1 to 2, actually from 2.0 to 2.1, breaking changes, 2.1 to 2.2, breaking changes, all the way to up, up to 2.5. So, and there's going to be 2.6 coming out next year, I believe. And every time it's, it's breaking changes, you can't, you, you really have to rewrite your code. Uh, but it comes with a big, big advantage that you get the best at the end. So you get very, you get the latest in, in, um, latest in quality basically you're not stuck with you know v your very very old way of thinking uh, you know using like if you're stuck with spring for example you'd still be using XML and uh, you know Java beans which is very old way of thinking uh, and they can't really deprecate it because of the need for backwards compatibility so setting points I have two slides on that uh, it's very robust so it has a good choice of types for you already available uh, it lets you that robustness in itself for example the optional types you know they prevent no pointer exceptions um, that either type for example that I mentioned actually the either type is what you use to um, to handle errors so you d instead of typically throwing an exception in Java uh, in some cases in Scala you may actually want to return either an error or a successful value which prevents so many mistakes which frankly leads to very very fast development 
because you know that things won't be breaking randomly like someone made a code change in one place added you know through an exception one day and then everything follows and breaks um, it just it just doesn't happen anymore for me which is very very good uh, there are many many talented developers in Scala uh, that you can work with you can hire Singapore doesn't have so many Scala developers as London does which is a, a bit of a shame but hopefully this will change that a little bit. Um, it has reached critical mass. It's no longer a it's no longer a niche language. So back when I started, it was kind of on its way up, but um, not many pe not many companies were using it yet. It was only Twitter and LinkedIn practically um, out of the big names that I'm aware of. Uh, but now it's used by Airbnb, Netflix, big banks, UBS, Morgan Stanley, uh, yeah, Bank of America. I'm sure some of you have worked there as well. Um, it's very concise, lets you get stuff done with a lot less code. A lot less code means fewer things to maintain, it means fewer breakages, and that means happy customers at the end of the day. Um, and I think one of the big selling points, again, a bit undersold, is the SBT native packager, which, um, which lets you take our application and package it into a Debian image, so into a Deb. Uh, you can install your app easily onto Ubuntu or onto Debian, into an RPM. Uh, so for CentOS or for Fedora or Red Hat, uh, you can build a Docker image very, very easily. Again, straight from straight from your SBT console. So you don't need to do anything crazy. It's just all there by default. You can even build for Windows. So uh, second selling points. So while Scala on its own is very nice, uh, but there's a reason. If if. If Scala were not on the JVM, I would be doing Kotlin, most likely. And many people would be doing Haskell. Uh, so you get, you get this very, very nice thing of Java Mission Control. In Java Mission Control, you're able to performance profile your code really, really easily. You, you don't need to go around guessi <laughs> guessing where your uh, performance bottlenecks are. You actually go in scientifically determine uh, where that, that bottleneck is. I mean, I've had, in 20 minutes, I have had a 60 times performance boost. So something that took an hour takes one minute. 20 minutes of Java mission control profiling. It comes with um, JVM by GDK, actually, by default. So on a, on a Mac, you just type in JMC into your console, and the job is done. Uh, JMX, uh, I actually wrote an article about that. Uh, you're able to uh, manage your application remotely without having to build any REST APIs. Uh, it's functionality that's already built into uh, into Java, into the Java platform. It lets you, for example, switch a feature uh, at runtime. It lets you do, for example, monitoring. So on this on this project uh, where I was doing uh, the high speed packet capture. I want to know if there are any packets dropped, but I, you know, I want to keep my application simple. It's just a command line application. Why would I build a REST service for it? Um, so I would, I would start the application, and then I would just basically uh, run JFC, and I would be able to access the metrics to see how many packets were dropped at any point in time. And this allowed me the confidence to see, to, de to know at runtime without any Heisenberg effect that my app is actually working properly. Um, another thing, the JVM comes with Java 8 time, uh, a very, very comprehensive um, library to deal with time, calendars, time zones. It's, it's replaced Jodo time, which was, you know, the lack of Java 8 time was basically the reason why Jodo time existed. But we don't need Jodo 8 anymore. Uh, I think I already mentioned JavaFX. Uh, very useful if you want to <coughs> prototype your idea very really quickly. 
Um, but it really depends on your use case. <coughs> uh, the very, very big thing um, is the XML infrastructure. Uh, so XML hasn't hasn't been isn't gone yet, and it's not going to, because uh, like if if you ever tried transforming a JSON object into another JSON object, you know have have an object nest with a bunch of nested arrays and nested objects within them, you'll 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 see why XSLD exists. So the JVM provides you with a very very high quality XML access. You can do XML streaming. You can um, yeah. XSLT, you can do XQuery, XPath. Um, it's all very, very, very well supported. Um, I think Maven Central is probably the thing that uh, enables both the JVM and Scala to happen. Uh, people are able, we're able to, um, in SBT, reuse any library that's available on Java. This makes life really, really easy. You don't have to rewrite the code. Um, and and you know a, a huge time saver, a huge time saver. Like you, you need to, uh, you, you know you need to deal with spatial coordinates, just like import a library. Really easy. Uh, but if you try that on something like Node.js on Python, it's like yeah, quite painful. You're not sure if it's if it's robust, if it's tested properly. You kind of just go in there and hope for the best. Um, another, I think I'm. I think I'm sounding a bit nostalgic, like a enterprise developer. Apache Commons uh, <coughs> comes with lots of useful functionality. Um, I/O, uh, anything that's missing from Java, basically, and actually is missing from Scala potentially. So, take a short break. Just read through. Okay, so um, I find that learning Scala as a language on its own isn't very, very useful. Um, typ a typical Scala tutorial will tell you to download the Scala uh, zip file or install it and then kind of go into the REPL, compile everything by hand. Um, but the, the real power actually comes from using SBT. SBT is SBT and Scala tests are really the true gatekeepers to Scala. They let you, um, they let you go to production very, very easily. That includes SBT native packager um, and many other SBT plugins that just save your life. For example, I mentioned SBT JNI. Let's let 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 me compile. C it even let me compile C code straight from my SBT build. So. There's a lot of functionality available. Uh, my way of TDD might be a bit different from what I, what someone would do in Java, Ruby, or Python, because Scala already comes with very good type checking. So you don't really need to uh, write as much, write as many tests. Your tests are actually much smaller, and you focus only on this, only on, only on testing the moving parts. You don't really have to test the um, you don't really have to test your uh, whether you are accessing, you know, a key in a dictionary correctly. You don't really have to worry about missing methods, for example, which is a big thing in Ruby. Um, yeah, play framework um, is de facto very, very powerful framework. Uh, very flexible. It also follows with um, with SBT's pattern. While the startup is, is it's quite slow. It's actually slower than, say, using Node.js or using uh, Drop Wizard. Uh, actually, Play Framework will let you scale your code, and it's very, very good for big teams. Uh, and I've written a quarter answer on a question about, you know, what's good about Play Framework, what's bad. Uh, PlayJSON and Circuit JSON libraries. So I mentioned a uh, lack of. Um, a single central JSON library 
or rather standard JSON library. So play JSON typically comes with the play framework. Um, but the Cirque JSON library is uh, much more advanced, uses the latest tools such as uh, the cats library, uh, whereas play JSON uh, has its own way of you know serializing on a Scala case class into a JSON object. Um, Java Mission Control, I already mentioned that. Aka agents, very, very underlooked feature. Aka agents are the dual to an actor. So an Aka actor is, uh, gives stuff to the actor and then the actor decides what his state will be. Um, whereas an Aka agent, Aka agent is the container for data. So the state, the, the transformation, the function is provided externally. Uh, so ACA agents are very useful for state management, uh, whereas I said something really smart. An ACA agent, yeah. So an actor uh, manages its own state, whereas an agent's state is managed managed by someone else. Um, Spark SQL. If you if you if you're querying a big data set. A SQL data set, like if you're querying from Hadoop, or if you're querying from, uh, actually you can query from SQL as well. Uh, you can write very, very easy queries. You don't need to write a data, you don't need to import your data into Postgres or something. And actually, in, again, Teralytics, I've worked with Sergey on this. Uh, we found that uh, Spark SQL outperforms Postgres in quite a few use cases. Um, it's definitely something you want to use for batch jobs, um, whereas you know Postgres, you probably want to use more for live transaction processing, where you have to, you know, where you really need that atomicity, you need that um, power of transactions. Uh, and I think the the most important recommendation, which is not actually uh, Scala based, uh, it's just having appropriate coupling. So you don't you don't want to couple your code in the wrong places. Um, typically, my preference is a modular monolith. So I write a bunch of separate modules, and then I would combine them in one place. Basically, uh, that lets me take components out and plug new ones in. Uh, but it's not always avoidable. Uh, you may have a business need, for example, to uh, have more of a microservices architecture. Um, have more of a need to separate components, um, or rather, se you know, have separate services and make them talk to each other. So, yeah. So, this is my recommendations upcoming. So, I'm gonna be doing some slides, videos, printouts, and interactive reference on essential production Scala. Uh, that is uh, going to talk about SBT, TDD. Uh, some play framework and how to get it out all the way to uh, a Google Cloud or Amazon Cloud. So a very different approach from learning Scala up front and then learning SBT and then learning, learning something else. You'll just get started, basically. Um, the, 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 the biggest pain point of, of, his, of learning SBT is that it's introduction. Um, according to many people on Reddit and according to many people on Twitter is, is built for somebody who wants to develop another SBT. It's, it's very, very, uh, very Haskell-y, let's say, the documentation of how to use it. But you don't really need that. You just want to build some, you know, you want to take some Scala source files and you want to produce some binaries that you can run. So yeah, uh, you can sign up now on this. Just enter your email address and that's where I'm, I'm going to post up the videos. Uh, yeah, so this address, uh, I'm going to post it up on LinkedIn as well. And yeah, find me on my website, Twitter, LinkedIn, GitHub, there's lots of code. Some of it is, is really good, some of it is, is not at all. But I, I, it's worth looking at anyway, because it shows, you know, you, you'll over time you'll see that uh, you change, your way of thinking changes. Okay, uh, is that all? Yeah.
Great. So thank you very much. Questions.